Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing part 2 for what if Naruto had constant baryon. Now, I just want to say, um, I am finally back at my actual, like, house. Which means, like, the audio quality should have gone up by, like, a crazy amount compared to, like, the first episode. And also, like, the Ten Tails series. Because, you see, the thing is... I was like on the other side of the world, right? And I had to do like 11 total hours of flight to get back here, but you know, I am back and now the audio quality should be a lot better. So that's that. So, anyway, last time we left off, um, Team 7 was just, uh, going to the training grounds to do the bell test. Um, anyway, Kakashi just basically explains how the bell test works, which, you know, we all know how the bell test works. There's two bells, you have to get the bells to pass, blah blah blah. Technically, you know, it's all about teamwork, and the, the getting the bells thing is just like a trick. But, you know, if somebody does end up getting the bells, I guess that would count as well. Either way, Kakashi tells them to start, and they all head off, like, immediately run off into the woods where, you know, they start making a plan. Where, you know, Sasuke goes off thinking about, you know, what he should do. Sakura goes off, you know, thinking about what she should do, which is just to hide, because he is an absolute trash bag. Uh, but either way, Naruto, on the other hand, does not. And Naruto just attacks Kakashi head-on, just like, goes straight in there and attacks Kakashi, just going straight for the bells. Um, I mean, Naruto is extremely powerful, uh, in terms of, like, generally just his strength i mean he has trained a lot so he is a lot stronger um than most people sorry guys my brain just completely froze there like i just stopped thinking like my brain just shut off um but yeah uh you know they would just keep fighting naruto versus kakashi like head on just taijutsu, nothing else. You know, just mixing in some jutsu here and there. But generally, it's just straight up, equal, actually equal ground. Um, they're just fighting taijutsu. Kind of like what happened with Sasuke and Kakashi. And Kakashi really starts to get impressed by, like, Naruto's strength and abilities. Uh, and mastery, you know, like, a genin shouldn't be this powerful. So, he is, he is impressed. Kakashi is impressed. Um, but, uh, Naruto, you know, starts to get overwhelmed, you know, because Kakashi is a Jonin, like, how, how powerful do you expect Naruto to be, even if he is being trained by the Ninetales, he's not Jonin level yet, as a Genin, like, newly as a Genin, but, meanwhile, as Sasuke, I mean, Kakashi is concentrating all of his attention to Naruto, Sasuke sees an opening and swoops in to get the bells. Kakashi, unfortunately, does notice this and just does a back kick, sending uh, Sasuke flying right back. But then, you know, Sasuke recovers himself and realizing that, well, now he has revealed where he's hiding. I mean, what point is there in just continuing to hide? He just decides to join the battle. And now Kakashi starts fighting both of them at the same time. Now... Naruto here um, decides to, you know, step it up a little bit to become stronger so he can rival Kakashi and Kakashi's strength. So he activates his new Kurama influence mode. Um, or as it's not the Kurama influence mode, he just generally uh, starts to borrow chakra from uh, 
the Nine Tails. Like, remember how, for example, when Naruto was like drive through Naruto off the cliff, and Naruto talked to Kurama, and Kurama gave him chakra so he could summon Gamabunta, right? And that that wasn't necessarily a mode. It wasn't like he was in Kurama influence mode or anything. He just borrowed chakra from the Nine Tails. You know, the Nine Tails just kind of helped him out, gave him some of his chakra. That sort of stuff, which is kind of what's happening here. Kurama is helping Naruto out by more than doubling, like quintupling maybe, or quadrupling his chakra reserve just by constantly sending him just chakra. So when that starts to happen, um, Naruto starts to gain the upper hand, and Kakashi starts to focus more on Naruto. Just, you know, once again, even though he's fighting two people, he really has to put way more of his attention on Naruto, because, remember, Kakashi doesn't have his Sharingan active, so in this state, Naruto is actually starting to, like, overpower Kakashi, because he both has training and is getting a lot of chakra from the Nine Tails itself. And in this moment, Sasuke is able to just go in and get the bells. Kakashi... Um, yeah, sorry, just, uh, Nar- Sasuke gets the bell, and Kakashi noticing that Sasuke just took a bell, just, like, turns his attention to Sasuke for, like, an instant, just an instant, and in that moment, Naruto is able to just go in and barely snag, uh, just snatch, snag, snatch, snatch the um other bell as well i think both of those work snag snatch uh i might sound like a complete idiot right now but i think both of them work either way um yeah team seven passes and kakashi is actually very impressed with naruto's and sasuke's strength although sakura sakura needs a a little bit of improvement just just a little bit (laughs) Yeah, who am I kidding? She's just, like, still a pink trash bag. Um, but, yeah. So, since they are now an official team, um, they, uh, start going on boring D-rank missions. And, uh, like, obviously so, they all start getting bored, because... <sighs> Sorry. But this is a team... With Kakashi, one of the strongest Jonin out there, who has a Tutomo Shine gun. Um, Naruto, son of the fourth Okage and Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Um, and Sasuke, who is an Uchiha and a prodigy. I mean, forget Sakura, just those three by themselves is a very powerful team. So, when they ask Hirzen for a more difficult mission, he really can't say anything except for, I mean, accepting and being like you know what sure just have a harder mission i really can't be bothered with arguing with you right now you're powerful anyway you can have this c rank escort mission to escort tazna sorry but they're like yeah okay that that sounds good so the next day they meet up at the gate with tazna and decide that now they will be heading off to the land of waves. Uh, E. So, they head off. Um, you know, they've all got food, a bit of food packed, a bit of, like, water, you know, all the essential stuff, right? But even still, like, with the, like, small water bottle, let's say, they have with them, it's just so hot, and it has been hot. There's, like, been no rain, it's just completely heat for the past well week uh almost so it is very hot and they are walking all the way to the land of waves so they do end up getting very tired so you can guess that you know when a bunch of people who are dying from the heat are very thirsty um and are like running low on water when they see a random puddle on the side of the road they are gonna be suspicious of it Naruto does notice this, although he just kind of puts it in the back of his mind, not like thinking about if that there might be enemies inside of the puddle, because the puddle doesn't look deep. But he does notice the puddle, and he he it is he is like if somebody jumps out of there, he's not going to be sub- sub- 
subscribed. <laughs> Speaking of which, you guys should be subscribed because it helps me out a lot and trying to reach 2k subs. Um, yeah, but I meant surprised. <laughs> um, uh, which is funny because the Demon Brothers do end up jumping out of the puddle and attacking Naruto and the rest of Team 7. Uh, as I said, Naruto literally just notices them and basically just kicks, just kicks one of the Demon Brothers like far away, just like with a bunch of force. While Sasuke deals with the other Demon Brother who has the chain, just like he did in the original, in Kakashi who was planning on like pretending to die, which I still don't get like to this day. Why would you do that? Like. These are two weak tuning levels, and you basically just effectively got one of your uh, students poisoned for no reason when you could have just taken them on. But, you know, in this, Kakashi actually stays and decides to take care of the Demon Brothers himself, and, you know, they take care of the Demon Brothers pretty easily that way. So, yeah, no surprise there. And if you did hear some background noise there, like somebody running down the halls and then screaming inside my yeah that's my little brother uh i think this is starting to become a common theme in my videos i really have to put like a do not disturb sign on my door but like just in this part of the what if right like i've been recording for what 10 minutes first my mom walked into my room then my dad and now my little brother it really does get annoying but <sighs> Yeah, there's there's not much I can do about it. Either way, um, yeah, where were we? Demon Brothers. Demon Brothers dead, and they continue off on their <laughs> just like lost my entire train of thought. But yeah, uh, either way, the mist starts rolling in, and we already know this to be none other than Zabuza. And like, Team Seven does kind of question the fog. But Tazuma says, I mean, this is the the Hidden Mist Village. I'm pretty sure Land of Waves isn't the Hidden Mist Village. I, I, I do believe so. This is this should this should be common knowledge, but like I st I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, so he's just like, yeah, this is the Hidden Mist Village. I mean, um, you're gonna expect to see some mist. Pretty obvious. And that does sound like a reasonable explanation. Until, of course, a random blade comes flying in through the air, trying to chop your head off. Yeah, you know, that's that's something that normally happens when they're missed. I mean, missed, flying blades, trying to kill you, uh, same thing. I, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. But either way, Team 7 actually wants to survive, so they duck. Duck under the braid as it gets itself lodged in the tree. Anyways, this fight goes pretty much the same as in the original. I mean, Zabuza lands on his blade, does his whole, like, talk with Kakashi, being like, oh, Kakashi uh, of the Sharingan, you know, um, the copy ninja, Kakashi the copy ninja, and Kakashi, like, oh, it's Zabuza of the Mist, and then they have their entire fight where Kakashi gets cocky, doesn't use the Sharingan, gets trapped in the water prison, you know, all of the usual stuff. But Naruto uh, uses water walking, right? And um, he does know this because remember he has been trained by like the strongest tailed beast, except for of course like the ten tails. But I'm not counting that. I mean he has been trained by Kurama and had like spent years um, studying in the ancient Uzumaki libraries. So I mean I can't say that he can't water walk. Not only that, but Naruto was a prodigy in the original. The only thing that was stopping him from using jutsus was the Nine Tails interfering with his chakra. In this version, the Nine Tails is helping out with his chakra. So logically speaking, he should be even more of a prodigy than Minato. So there is no reason for him not to be able to water walk. Anyway, yeah. So Naruto water walks his way over to Zabuza. And um, suddenly... Uh, something just completely changes about Naruto and if before he just seemed like a normal Genin Chunin level just young shinobi he's just entire like demeanor and like the energy that he was giving off 
changed as suddenly the aura around him just completely spiked up as this orange sort of um just auras like started going around him like appearing and Zaza was shocked like just to see this in immense amount of chakra going around Naruto as in front of Zabuza's eyes Naruto just disappeared reappearing behind him and kicking him in the back with an incredible amount of force and they immediately got to fighting with Zabuza and Naruto clashing at almost equal strength but Naruto in this state I mean mostly his only purpose here was to free Kakashi out of his own prison so after getting a few punches on Zabuza, Zabuza was able to hit him with a powerful water-style jutsu, and Naruto got sent back, but he grinned, realizing that he had already done what he needed to do. As while Naruto was still falling down, back down to the ground from Zabuza's punch, Zabuza also got punched right in the head from behind by none other than Kakashi, this time with his Sharingan active. And you guys already know how this goes. Uh, Kakashi absolutely destroys Zabuza using his Sharingan. And Zabuza gets blasted just like into a tree and gets knocked out. And as Kakashi is moving up to Zabuza, about to finish off the job, Haku comes in striking special like per certain points in uh, Zabuza's body to knock him out and make him seem like he is dead. As... He claims that he's a mistracking nin and um, just takes Zabuza and body flickers out of there. As, um, you know, Kakashi, being already kind of exhausted from using his Sharingan, is too tired to like argue with the supposed, supposed tracking ninja. So, you know, he just kind of accepts it and moves on. Either way, with that, um, they go to Tazna's house, taking the boat there, and, you know, they eat some really good food, because Tazna's daughter, I actually forgot her, her name, like, it's, I've heard a bunch of different whatevers, like, call it a bunch of different things, like, Tsunami, to soon not... Tazumi, you know, just a bunch of different names, just like, but I don't know, I'm not gonna say anything, because I'm not sure I'll be correct, so yeah, whoever, just Tazna's daughter, yeah, just Tazna's daughter, uh, would cook a delicious meal for the team, and yeah, the next day after everybody is rested, Kakashi has recovered from the chakra exhaustion, and everything like that, they head off over to like, a open area in the forest so that Kakashi can train Team 7 and help them improve their chakra control. So, um, <laughs> Sakura and Sasuke train on tree walking, and since Sakura gets tree walking quickly, she can move on to try and water walking, but Kakashi already knows. Naruto can do both of them, so he kind of just do, does hand-to-hand -hand combat training with Naruto, which he also already excels at, but, you know, there's no there's no reason not to train. You still gotta train. You, can just, you can't just, like, be like, oh, yeah, I'm already perfect at it, and just, like, stop training, because then you'll fall behind. So, you know, he trains. Now, um, you guys might be hearing that I'm pausing the video a lot, but that's just because there's so much, like, background noise and, like, I am not exaggerating, like, just every, like, two minutes, somebody's just barging into my room, so I kind of just have to cut the video, um, and then continue from there, so that's that, but either way, continuing on with the what if, so after their training, Team 7 goes over to the bridge to help Tosna, you know, build, build the bridge, I mean, that's literally why they, they're here. And, wouldn't you know it, as they're working on the bridge, the fog, the mist, Zabuza's jutsu, whatever it's called, comes back. As, suddenly, it's just, they can't even see anything. 
And the instant they see this happening, they already know who this is. As they look back to see Zabuza and Haku coming towards them. Now, um, you know, seeing this, Naruto just tells Kakashi that, you know, they'll take on Haku. As Kakashi says, yeah, I'll take on Zabuza. So, you know, that's decided, and Sakura is just defending, you know, Tazna. Tazna? Yeah, Tazna. <laughs> Imagine I forgot his name. That would be kind of embarrassing, wouldn't it? Um, but either way, Naruto, Sasuke, and uh, Haku start fighting. And in the original, when Haku and Sasuke first had their hand to hand combat section, Sasuke was actually adapting and keeping up with Haku. And assuming that in this what if, Naruto is quite a bit stronger and faster than Sasuke in the original, that makes me make the pretty safe assumption that both Sasuke and Naruto combined in this what if would be able to take on uh, Haku pretty, pretty decently, and they would actually be overwhelming Haku, just constantly attacking Haku from both sides. Uh, Naruto attacking him from the front and Sasuke from the back that that, that kind of does sound weird that, that's kind of sus don't take that out of context but you know um, <laughs> either way even with um, Haku's Senbon it's really hard for Haku to defeat both of them at the same time because this isn't really the place for Senbon since they're on an open bridge and the mist isn't quite around the area, you know, they're a bit further away from the mist. You know, Zabuza and Kakashi are fighting in the mist, um, Haku is not. So, Haku really has nowhere to hide, it's just plain strength and speed and skill. Which, Haku has a lot of, but so does Naruto. So, as Haku starts to realize that he can't win just by doing this, he decides, fine, I'll use it. We didn't really want to kill them, but if it means that they're gonna end up killing Master Zabuza, I must finish them off. So, with that, Haku starts weaving hand signs as he says, Ice cri- wait, what? The, the ice crystal demon mirror- e just the ice mirrors, right? I'm pr I don't remember the exact name, it was something like ice crystal mi demon mirrors, but just let's just call them ice mirrors. As suddenly, both Naruto and Sasuke are completely surrounded by ice mirrors. And Haku on the outside says, Now. Now you're dead. As he walks into the mirror and suddenly appears in all the mirrors. As Sasuke immediately, you no know, thinking fast, starts weaving hand signs and throws a powerful fireball jutsu at the uh, mirrors yet um uh it just it just doesn't work because the mirrors are too powerful for sasuke's fireball as we do know from the actual like naruto series it was stated that well it is quite obvious actually uh and as you know sasuke then tries the phoenix uh flower jutsu phoenix I still to this day do not know if it's Phoenix Fire Jutsu or Phoenix Flower Jutsu because I remember it to be Phoenix Flower, but probably Phoenix Fire, I don't know. Uh, just tries that as well, trying to hit all the mirrors in one go, maybe that will affect Haku, but he realizes that once Haku has entered a mirror, he can no longer be hit. As Haku uh, starts pulling out Senbon, and they just realize what? what is happening in that moment but naruto is concentrated on something else ice ice where had he heard that before ice release ice jutsu then it clicked in his head it's a keke genkai realizing that haku was one of the worthy sacrifices to achieve baryon mode he said haku Oh wait, he doesn't know Haku's name, so listen, whoever you are, you, you, I didn't want to kill you, but now I realize you have a certain something 
that I am after, so now you have to die. But Haku just ignores this and says, well, you'll have to think that again, as he starts throwing Senbon from all different directions, and Sasuke and um, Naruto just continue to dodge and dodge and dodge, but Haku just moves through the mirror so quickly and can throw Shuriken, I mean Shuriken, Senbon at high, such high speeds that they just scr- struggle. And by struggle, I mean struggle a lot. But either way, after a while, Sasuke does awaken his one Tomoe Sharingan. But Naruto, being, not being in a Uchiha, Uchiha, obviously, does not awaken a Sharingan. As for a moment, he's caught off guard. And Sasuke, with his Sharingan, sees Haku throwing the Senbon at Naruto, realizing that unless Naruto can get out the way, he he will die. As he, in a last ditch effort, jumps in the way, trying to push Naruto out, while at the same time getting hit by the Senbon himself. As he drops to the ground and says, <laughs> Naruto, you idiot. And then, seemingly dies. As Naruto, seeing that, something just like, changes in him. As in that moment, his entire aura just completely changes. And slowly, slowly, Haku's just like, standing there, looking at Naruto, as this orange aura starts to, you know, like come start coming off of him as haku feels fear just from the immense amount of chakra and killing intent oozing off of naruto as suddenly uh the aura around naruto the chakra surrounding him goes to an incredible size as naruto turns around and says now you've done it and in a single in in a single rage filled scream he lets off an insane burst of chakra completely destroying the ice mirrors in one go as an intense pressure is like just put on um, Haku, like kind of not exactly like Orochimaru thing where he uh, stuns people like from the fear, but a little bit like that almost. As Haku can't even like almost can't even move as he's falling out of the sky, and Naruto taking a more like let's say animal like stance, you know the one he takes when he has the nine tails influence and he leaps at haku as he's still in the air at incredible speeds and punches haku straight to the ground causing a huge crack like making a mini crater in the bridge as naruto comes down as well punching uh, haku in the gut and then uh picking up haku by the face and stabbing his hand into his chest as you know he he says that's what you get for killing sasuke and suddenly the literal life energy of haku starts getting sucked out of him just naruto can see like this yellowish energy just coming out of haku and through his hand into his arm and into his body as he can feel the strength just like going into him as Haku's life energy. The first of the three sacrifices required for infinite baryon mode had been acquired. Naruto finally calming down drops Haku as at this um, same moment uh, Kakashi also stabs his hand into Zabuza's chest as he dies as well and you know Gato's mercenaries do come eventually uh, but uh, you know they really just get taken care of very easily they're really not much of a problem 
Sasuke, it turns out he didn't die, but you guys already knew this because you are fans of Naruto and you know he didn't actually die. And, you know, after everybody recovered, they headed back to the village with the bridge getting finally completed and named the Great Naruto Bridge. And yeah, so they head back to the village and report to Hiruzen about the mission. But... <laughs> You guys already know what I'm going to say. This is where I'm going to be half having to end off this part. It has already been going on for quite a while. So, yeah. This is where I'm going to end off. Um, yeah. See you guys next time.